it's Ashton. And it is John. What is up, Sub Sandwiches? We are back again with another reaction video. In today's video, we're going to be learning about the... Top 10 Greatest Slave Rebellions by the channel Home Team History. The link is down in the description. Go and subscribe if you like this video. This guy is almost about our size of our channel so um go show your support it's yeah. important to support the channels that you like this was a suggestion from matthew man matthew man thank you so much for the support do appreciate it. it's a little bit longer video so you can throw around some extras so we do appreciate that you guys can also help support the channel if you click on that link down below in the descripto and throw down through Streamlabs. gonna let you pick when the next videos that we react to just keep it under 10 minutes include the videos link title your email and let's get to that video history language and identity the ripping apart of family units and royal bloodlines. Is that a baby? The absolute so. and complete torment of our fathers and mothers before us. The Middle Passage was a devastating event, culminating into the displacement and death for millions of Africans and their descendants around the world. This event left the diaspora dehumanized, constantly seeking the freedom that humanity was supposed That's to crazy. provide. That's crazy. Though at times we were pinned as being docile, complacent that was boats wasn't it it looked like it yeah what okay. and submissive in our pain today we have the opportunity to tell the whole story a story of I redemption am confused about that picture though and righteous mm -hmm. why was there a white baby i have no idea maybe it showed sorry, that they just... like were forced to be nannies and stuff like that too or i don't know i don't know i'm just kind of like i I'd never have seen a picture like that, so I'm like, what? what's the story behind that photo, you know? Right. Business. A story in which Africans exemplify courage, determination, and the splendid magnificence of the human spirit. The persistent resistance of African people during enslavement, fighting for their humanity, made them world leaders. Their struggle, endowed as a model, driving all of humanity forward. What up, African world? It's Home Team here, and I'm back at it with another... You know what that kind of reminded me of, actually? The song, or that Yeah, picture? the song. What? Is that song that does that. Isn't that from Lion King? It uh, kind of sounds like that a little that's bit. That's why I was doing this, because it sounded like similar. I actually that. thought it was going to be that at first. I'm not trying to be mean here, but it was a cool intro. Video but back it's a history, good song, though. Culture, yeah, for sure. World view. And as usual, <clears throat> if you like these videos and would like to support in the continued production, gaining access to sources, courses, and exclusive videos, you can support the home team on Patreon.com. The link is in the description box below. Today, we're going to talk about the top 10 greatest slave rebellions in the African diaspora. So let's get right into it. That music. Starting off at number 10, we have the Slave Rebellion at San Miguel de Guadalupe. In 1526, the settlement of San Miguel de Guadalupe was founded by a Spanish explorer named Lucas Vasquez. It was the first European settlement in what became the continental United States. Scholars aren't exactly sure where this settlement was within the United States. Some say Georgia and others even say near Jamestown, Virginia. Regardless, the Africans imported there refused to be enslaved. Vasquez had brought a group of roughly 100 seasoned enslaved Africans and natives from Spain. The enslaved Africans rebelled with many escaping and taking refuge among some of the other native populations. Ironically, one of the first, if not the first slave rebellion within the continental United States was a successful one. The surviving African slaves were considered the first non-native settlers in the region and were pretty much absorbed into the local population. Coming in at number nine, we have the 1842 slave revolt in the Cherokee Nation. Oh, snap. For whatever reason, history tends to ignore all the native Indian tribes that had purchased and mistreated enslaved Africans. The Cherokee were one of the biggest perpetrators of this. I didn't know that. The rebellion on Indian Cherokee territory took place in Oklahoma and was the largest escape of a group of slaves that occurred amongst the Cherokee. The slave revolt started on November 15, 1842, when a group of 20 African-American slaves owned by the Cherokee escaped and tried to reach Mexico. 
where slavery had been abolished in 1836. Along their way south, they were joined by 15 slaves escaping from the creek in Indian territory. They raided local stores for weapons, ammunition, horses, and mules. The Cherokee amassed a small army along with some Choctaw warriors to pursue them and eventually caught up. Because they were tired and ran out of food and other provisions, they were all rounded up successfully and brought back, with some even being executed for the insurrection. Oh, shit. This Cherokee rebellion was penned, and I quote, as the most spectacular act of rebellion against slavery among the Cherokee Nation. For number eight, we have one of the most popular rebellions in American history, Nat Turner's Rebellion. Nat Turner, even as a child, was said to possess an unusual sense of purpose. Via hindsight, we can all understand why. It was as if Turner was destined to show the world the magnificence of the human spirit. Driven by prophetic visions and joined by a host of followers, Nat Turner and about 70 armed enslaved men and free blacks set off to slaughter the white neighbors who enslaved them. In the early hours of the morning, they killed Turner's master, his wife and children with axes. By the end of the next day, the rebels had attacked about 15 homes and killed between 55 and 60 whites as they moved toward their promised land. An idea advanced greatly through his religious vigor. The rebellion was famously put down and Turner was eventually captured and killed. But the way in which he used the religion of his enslavers to turn against them and rally the troops was nothing short of spectacular. And today, Nat Turner is immortalized for it in American history. Next, at number seven, we have the Stono Rebellion. The Stono Rebellion was the largest slave revolt ever staged in the 13 colonies. On Sunday, September 9th, 1739, a day free of labor, about 20 slaves under the leadership of a man named Jemmy provided his enslavers with a painful lesson on the African desire for freedom and liberty, the very founding precepts of American identity. According to some sources, many of the enslaved Africans were actually warriors from Angola and were trained in warfare. Oh shit. They gathered at the Stono River and raided a store, executing the white owners and placing their victims' heads on the store's front steps for all to see. They moved on to other houses in the area, killing the occupants and burning the structures, marching through the colony towards St. Augustine, Florida, where under Spanish law, they would all be free. Not all enslaved blacks joined the rebellion, however, and some actually hid their masters. As they marched toward Florida, they reportedly shouted Lukango, meaning liberty in their native Angolan language. Although some did make it to Florida, the majority of the fighters were killed by colonists who rallied the troops. Coming in at number six, we have the first Maroon War on the Caribbean island of Jamaica. The first Maroon War was a conflict between the Jamaican Maroons and the colonial British authorities that started around 1728 and continued until the peace treaties of 1739 and 1740. This was one of the first successful slave rebellions in all of the Caribbean. In 1655, the British defeated the Spanish colonists and took control of most of Jamaica. After the Spanish fled, Africans escaped to the mountains and created maroon communities. The British could not at all gain a stronghold over the maroon communities in Jamaica and were consistently halted by maroon ambition. The British eventually conceded that they could not defeat the Maroons, so they came to an agreement with them instead. One of the greatest leaders of the Maroon communities in Jamaica was a woman the Jamaicans call Queen Nanny. She was born of the Ashanti people and escaped slavery starting a Maroon community in the mountains. Some call her the Obia woman. Obia, largely deriving from traditional African spiritual beliefs from Ghana. Following some armed confrontations with the British, Queen Nanny and the Maroons were able to maintain their sovereignty. It's because of this history that she became a national hero for Jamaica. 
Being descended from a maroon is looked upon as a high honor within That's Jamaican cool, that. culture, even unto this day. Next, at number five, we have the 1733 St. John Insurrection. One of the earliest slave revolts in North America saw a group of African slaves effectively conquer the Danish-owned Caribbean island of St. John for a brief time. At the time, most of St. John's slaves were part of the Akan, an African people from modern-day Ghana. Plagued with widespread illness, droughts, and harsh slave codes, in November 1733, a group of high-ranking Akans began to plot hey, against their Danish constant. enslavers. The severity of the... My, my parents keep calling us. Talk to them for a second. All right. Hello. So, so, okay. What I like about this so far, I'll put the mic this way, just be appropriate. Um, so far is that it is breaking down, like... I like it because no, it's breaking down, like, how, what they went through, and it's cool that they were able to have the rebellion, but at the same time, I don't like like the way it's making it look like it's well, heroic to kill people because like they kill children too. Oh, well, I'm thinking like, really yeah, they enslaved you, which is terrible, but killing children still doesn't sound well, right. So as soon as you throw that in there, it's well, all of a sudden just more of like a. When are you going? Look, like, you know, what I mean? it just levels out. It's like, well, oh, now this isn't a heroic story. Now it kind of sounds well, just like a. Uh, the rebellion, what a rebellion is, you know, when they completely go back against them and just kind of try to inflict the damage that they got done oh, and try to put it onto yeah. somebody else too, you know. I guess that's the way I'm trying to say it. Okay, give us ten minutes. Okay, okay, bye. Alright, All right, ready? Yeah. Sorry, I had to answer that because I don't like to not answer my parents' phone calls because we're very close, so yeah. if you don't, then they probably start to worry. Yeah. What I said when you were on the phone was... I like how it's cool, like, the re well, obviously the rebellion needs to happen because it needs to be put into motion, right. that it needs to stop, but at the same time, I don't like the way that, like, the the music that was going on, it made it seem like they were heroes when it said they were killing children, though. Yeah. Then it's like, whoa, wait a second. That's, that's different. <laughs> Everything seemed fine until that. Then when you start killing children, you know, there's... Resistance. You don't sound like a hero. Made it one of the know. earliest and longest slave uprisings but I get in the Americas. For several months, the enslaved Akans rebelled. Yeah. None directing their happen, anger no. toward the white estate managers with the aim of overthrowing them and taking control of the island. The rebellion began when a group of slaves used smuggled weapons to kill their Danish enslavers. Danish soldiers inside a fort of a plantation called Coral Bay was taken over. Another 150 conspirators soon converged on the island's other plantations, killing several white colonists and eventually seizing command of most of St. John. After six months of Akan rule over much of the island, French and Swiss troops from Martinique helped the Dutch regain control over the island and quell the rebellion. Coming in at number four, we have the Ganga Zumba Slave Rebellion. Ganga Zumba was the first leader of a massive runaway slave settlement in Brazil. Zumba was an enslaved African who escaped bondage on a sugar plantation and eventually rose to the position of highest authority, literally creating his own kingdom in Brazil. Damn. This tremendous achievement gave him the title Ganga Zumba, meaning Great Lord. Ganga was said to be African royalty as he was the son of a princess from the Congo Empire. During warfare with the Portuguese, he was captured as a prisoner of war and sent off to Brazil. Ganga helped to form maroon communities of former enslaved Africans in Brazil, which later formed into a well-organized kingdom in which he became king. Oh, shit. By the 1670s, Ganga Zumba had a palace, three wives, guards, ministers, and devoted subjects at his royal compound called Macaco. The compound consisted of 1,500 houses, which housed his family, guards and officials, all of which were considered royalty. It's so fitting that a prince of the Congo Empire would continue his royal lineage by literally creating an empire of his own yeah, under that's the worst crazy. conditions possible. He was bound for royalty no matter ways, what. Ganga affirms the importance of knowing who you are. His ability and determination to maintain his royal status under any circumstance exemplifies African Excellence. Breaking our top three, we have the Zanj Rebellion. 
The Zan's Rebellion was a major uprising against the Islamic Abbasid Caliphate in southern Iraq. Hey, what were those things used for again? Which things? Those things they put around them, their heads. Let me see what you're talking about. It's just back in that. I forget. Head. I know. I know. We we know what it is. I just am forgetting. Do you remember? What that thing that they all got on their heads right yes. there? Yes. That was to hold them so that they couldn't get away. I think oh, okay. into groups because this guy looks like he's leading them somewhere. Into rebellion. The Zan's rebellion was a major uprising against the Islamic Abbasid Caliphate in southern Iraq. The rebellion is believed to have involved enslaved Bantu-speaking people, or the Zanj, who had originally been captured from the coast of East Africa and were brought to the Middle East. It grew to involve many slaves and free men from several regions of the Caliphate and claimed tens of thousands of lives. Jesus. Some historians attest that the Zanj rebellion was, and I quote, one of the bloodiest and most destructive rebellions which the history of Western Asia records. The Zanj absolutely brought total hell to the Abbasid government. They were able to combat the superior arms of the Abbasid government by waging guerrilla warfare against their opponents. They became adept at raiding towns, villages, and enemy camps, seizing weapons, horses, foods, and captives, and freeing fellow slaves. They built their own empire and conquered some regions within Abbasid rule, minting their own coins and even collecting taxes. After lasting several years and like weakening the Abbasid on. Caliphate, it was finally image, put though. down. But the legend of the Zan Jesus still Christ, persists today as it shook Western Asia nearly to its core. I can see that. Coming in at number two, that image alone we have me the Gaspar Yanga Rebellion. Gaspar Yanga was an enslaved African leader of a maroon colony in the highlands of maroon Veracruz, again. Mexico, during Spanish rule. Some scholars proclaim that Mexico had the second largest number of enslaved Africans after Brazil. Around 1570, Yanga led a band of slaves in escaping to the highlands near Veracruz, Mexico. Under Gaspar's leadership, they successfully and fiercely fought to maintain their freedom for more than 30 years in the Mexican highlands. The Spanish sent Damn. troops in attempts to take over the territory and re-enslave Gaspar and his community. Their attempts were greatly frustrated by the Maroons and the Spaniards could not at all gain a conclusive victory for years. Damn. Heavy losses on both sides drew the Spaniards to sign a treaty based on Gaspar's terms in 1618. Like Ganga Zumba, a knowledge of self was a driving force for Gaspar's resistance and ultimate triumph. Gaspar Yanga was said to be a member of a royal family, a prince from modern-day Gabon. In the late 19th century, Yanga was named as a national hero of Mexico, and the settlement he formed, located in today's Veracruz province, was renamed as Yanga in his honor. That's pretty Today, cool. The town reportedly hosts the Carnival of Negritude every August 10th in honor of the legendary African hero. Gaspar is no doubt one of the greatest African princes in world history, and his legacy is testament There's a theme to the here importance with the guys, like being for royalty and then like reclaiming are. themselves. And finally, coming in at number one, we have the Haitian Revolution. We all knew it was coming. The Haitian Revolution was the greatest slave uprising, not just for African diasporic history, this one. but Thanks, world man. history. There was no greater slave rebellion in ancient or modern history. The Haitian Revolution not only had vibrato, but it led to the formation of an entire state. It struck fear in the hearts of enslavers and inspired countless slave rebellions all across the Americas. Nat Turner himself is said to have been inspired by the Haitian Revolution. In fact, because the Haitians conquered Haiti and kicked out the French enslavers, the French were prompted to sell Louisiana to America. It's amazing yeah, that Haitian that. ambition even shaped American history itself. That's the crazy. success of the Haitian Revolution shook the Americas to its core and was a defining moment in the history of the African diaspora. One of the most interesting things about the Haitian Revolution 
that spearheaded its success was its ability to clean house domestically. The Haitians already knew that once they began their revolution, other slaves would conspire against it and side with the French. Thus, the Haitians largely took care of that problem first, getting rid of potential treasonous people, purifying themselves of fear before taking on the larger enemy. Most slave uprisings fail due to other slaves aiding their oppressor. The Haitians very intelligently and strategically outmaneuvered potential threats to their total takeover of Haiti. The use of the environment around them and driven Which by Which guy was it that helped him with that again? Was that Otto von Bismarck or am I confusing his name with a different one? Uh, don't ask me The this. guy from South America that was... Dude, we uh, have seen we watch so many videos so of this stuff. many that it's hard to keep track of like everything or remember everything. Right. The traditional African belief, the Haitians under their primary leader names, though, Toussaint Louverture, so. outwit all the European powers that sought to enslave them, and thrived. Today, because of this glorious history and this refusal to be enslaved, the nation of Haiti survives today wow. well i'm all out guys the ideas of liberty justice and freedom has seldom been associated with enslaved african people and their descendants but ironically african people were the ones upholding these ideas dressing themselves in the full armor of moral superiority african people and their descendants in the diaspora have always reminded the world what it really means to be human. If you like these videos and would like to see- He does have a Patreon, so if you do enjoy his content, go to his channel, subscribe, and check out his Patreon. Sorry about the cat in the video. She's you just can't loving up. You can't ignore her. We're such big animal people. We can't ignore her. We gotta give her love when she needs it because she, she, doesn't, ask, yeah. she doesn't ask for it much, so. Barely ever. Dude, that was so cute. She's like this. She's like, when I was petting her, she's like, I know. all the way onto her back on your lap. She's a little cutie. Uh, that was a really good video, though, along with the top 10 horrifying facts about the Genghis Khan. That, There's those, a lot to learn from that Those stuff. two were my favorite, for sure. Um, the 10 disturbing facts about Attila and the Huns, that was good, too. But these two were my favorite. Right, and rebellions are something that just need to happen when it comes to any kind of misstructure yeah. that's in the society, and that's how you get rid of it, you know? And right there was the 10 greatest examples, which is a Haitian one we did hear of. I forget the guy who aided in it. He was from South America. He lived there for, like, quite a long time. And he's actually from some other... I, we've learned I, about so many different people at this point. It's just starting to, like, mix too, together. It's too much. You know, like, <clears throat> we remember a lot of stuff that we see. But th there's so much that it's hard to keep track of names. First of all, I'm horrible with names. And it's hard to keep track of, like who's who sometimes because when you start to see so much of it in a short period of time that True it's that. just like but yeah we've we've seen a lot of really good videos it was cool that Haiti managed to maintain that too and just keep people off because they kept trying to take control of them and they kept up a good fight long enough to make it last go check out the channel that is home team history link is down they, below they would <clears throat> cut the heads off and leave them at people's doorsteps and shit like that That's was a that dog. yeah that's a bit crazy. Catch you guys in the next video. Peace.